Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So let's start out with the Bitcoin chart here. We're at 3776. Now, this is what I call the other side of the mountain. So when you have this type of formation, we kind of had it over here, but not really as strong as we have it here. Uh, when you're on the other side of the mountain, you've climbed to the tippy tippy top, and then you started to descend and you're sliding down. There's a tremendously powerful pull to keep going the direction that you're going. Uh, I can't really give you a technical explanation for it. Uh, it's more of a sentiment thing, but I've noticed in markets that when you get that sort of pattern, it's very difficult to stem the slide. Now you can see it was stemmed down here around 1800 on the last one. Uh, it's starting to look like we're going to get a retest of that 3000, but um, it's about halfway right now, so it wouldn't be surprising. Let's pull up the MACD just to sh just to see what the MACD is showing. But uh, it it wouldn't be surprising uh, to get a rally that just continues, just like this one. The the MACD is clearly reset here. You can see, and this latest touch point, it uh, came down. It looked like it was going to cross back down, but now it's continued up. So I'm not saying that. Uh, we can't just continue up from here. We can, but this side of the mountain has a lot of powerful downside pull. So I'm leaning towards two-thirds of a 67% uh, uh, chance that we're going to get a retest of that 3,000, maybe a, a third of a chance that we're going to get a retest of that 5,000. Uh, I'm, I'm leaning towards a test of the 3,000. If we do get that test, we could get a test of this 1500, but it's going to it's going to be hard to get through all of this. So, maybe 2500 and then we turn. Now, over to the precious metals. It's kind of interesting here. I want to make a comparison with cryptocurrencies and what we're seeing in the metals as well. You can see we've got gold, silver, platinum, copper, and palladium. Now, palladium hit that thousand mark. It's backed off a bit. Uh, platinum is not nearly as strong. In fact, platinum is almost kind of close to a buy price here, I would say. But um, silver's still obviously a better bargain. But the interesting thing is that you notice how all of these charts are moving exactly the same direction. Let's get to the hourly here. Uh, it doesn't well I wanted it to go go out farther on the dates unfortunately it doesn't so uh, let's try to find the date that this turned here because it's close to another date that I want to show you uh, on the Bitcoin chart but the main thing I wanted you to notice is that all of these markets turn down together now if one were to argue that these are all precious metals I think that would be obviously wrong copper clearly is not a precious metal and arguably palladium isn't platinum maybe but really gold and silver are the primary precious metals what does that mean I mean uh, investment metals metals that people buy to protect to store wealth for safety that element of money uh, so it's not it would not be surprising to see them move together but it would be surprising to see all of these move together that's more of a statement about money than it is a statement about these metals um, and even probably more so a statement about manipulated markets now let's look over at the crypto coin charts here the market cap of all of them is 133 billion you remember we hit 170 billion we're not far from that we're about ha the halfway point because it was 60 to 70 on the low and 170 on the high so we're kind of around the halfway point between those two you can see that Bitcoin is kind of sideways Ethereum's clearly turning up right here and I went long Ethereum uh, the last dip not Bitcoin uh, I just felt like Ethereum had, had, had dropped even farther than it should have uh, Litecoin is still kind of weak but overall if you look at the charts you can see they tend to all move in the same direction now what would cause that well a lot of these coins are denominated in Bitcoin 
so if you're talking the dollar price, then if Bitcoin goes down, then their dollar price is going to go down. So we'd have to get charts that were not U.S. dollar charts, but Bitcoin charts. But I think even if we did, you'd find the same thing, that these charts of these cryptocurrencies do the same thing that these metal charts do, which is move in the same direction. Why is that? Well, I think it's pretty obvious that it's the actions of the government, that the government is trying to influence markets. And that's the biggest problem that we have. That's, that's what we're fighting. Uh, that's why the economy over the entire world is so sick. Even though China, on a micro level, allows more free market activity, as Jeff Berwick states, China is actually more free market than we are. But that's on the, the minor level, on the micro level. On the, on the larger level, they're not. They're still communists. They're still uh, anti-free market, as we've seen with the move against Bitcoin recently. So I'm going to talk about uh, this latest story from Diamond doubling down and then China with Bitcoin and the, the Yuan. But before I do that, I want to look at the uh, Poloniex charts here. Uh, one thing I, I am noticing at Poloniex is that the cheap coins are rallying. So uh, you can put these in any order you want. If you click coin, they're in alphabetical. If you click price, they're in price order. Or you can do them by volume or percentage change. If we just do it by price and go for the lowest price, you can see the lowest price is Dogecoin. It's up 23%. Bytecoin's up 10%. Sia coins up 16, 17%. Very low price, uh, 129. The thing I pointed out before, but you have to remember about these low price coins is generally when you're looking at the bid ask, one way that it's really neat to trade these is that since they can't go lower than one Satoshi, this price of 129, that's 129 Satoshis. Satoshi being the smallest unit of Bitcoin, eight decimal places. So what you get when you have those low price coins is you get this wonderful bid ask, just one point. So if you buy at 130, uh, you can sell at 129. That's just a generalization. So, you know, if we look at Doge, for example, you've got uh, give it a second to load here and by the way take note on the chart here we, these are all kind of crossing over through that uh, MACD line so you got 25 and 26 you got 29 bitcoins worth bidding for it and 35 asking so that's one big advantage of these low price coins let's do bitcoin is and you can see Bitcoin probably I'm not trading right now but if I were trading I'd probably be buying Bitcoin right now um, that just that chart looks really good to me uh, you've got a potential double here if we get a test of that old 60 something and you can see two Bitcoins on the bid at a 33 seven Bitcoins on the ask it's also very, very easy to track to see if the buying is stronger than the selling because you just watch this total here of 7.37. And if you see this number starting to drop significantly and you see this number over here, the 2.3 starting to rise significantly, you know you're nearing a price move. And if I'm buying a rising market, I just watch as this begins to disappear and I buy right before it disappears. So that's another uh, way you can trade these. So bullish on the low price coins if you're looking to go long that might be a play that you could do so i want to get over to this diamond story we know that jamie diamond bashed bitcoin and then the chinese outlawed the exchanging of bitcoin for yuan and then diamond came back and bashed bitcoin again so something's going on <laughs> you know they're they're pulling out all the stops. Let's read a little bit of this. Having slammed Bitcoin earlier in the day during a Barclays financial conference, calling it a fraud, which is worse than tulip bulbs, it won't end well, and that any JP Morgan trader trading Bitcoin will be fired for being stupid. The JP Morgan CEO doubled down later in the day 
during an interview on CNBC's Delivering Alpha conference saying Bitcoin is just not a real thing. Eventually it will be closed. Okay, so this, you know, you really have to examine that phrase there. So if Bitcoin is not just a real thing, then why does it need to be closed? If it's not a real thing, then it doesn't have any value. Why doesn't Jamie Dimon trust the black market even, or any market, to value it at zero if it's nothing? So that's two arguments in one. It's saying it's not really worth anything, but uh, you guys keep driving the price up. So we're just going to shut it down. We're going to outlaw it. You can see those two don't really match. Making the Bitcoin advocates case for them, Diamond said he's skeptical authorities will allow a currency to exist without state oversight, especially if something goes wrong. Quote, someone's going to get killed and then the government's going to come down, he said. You just saw in China, governments like to control their money supply, which of course is the whole point behind cryptocurrency, a method of exchange that is independent of and in opposition to conventionally accepted fiat and monetary mechanisms, one which the government frowns upon if not outright rejects, even if it is ultimately unable to block it. As an example of that, observe the reaction in Bitcoin to this weekend's news that China is allegedly closing Bitcoin exchanges. BTC dropped from $4,700 to $4,200, and that was about it. Of course, to the CEO of JP Morgan, which incidentally is a founding member of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, and which nearly two years ago started a trial project using blockchain to cut trading costs, such positioning only has negative connotations. Quote, if you're in Venezuela or Ecuador or North Korea or a bunch of parts like that, or if you were a drug dealer, a murderer, stuff like that, you're better off doing it in Bitcoin than US dollars. So there may be a market for that, but it'd be a limited market. Interesting. So as I pointed out before, before we got Bitcoin in 2009, I guess uh, we didn't have a lot of drug dealing or murder or stuff like that, as Jamie says. He is right. The market is limited right now because only a handful of modern countries have experienced catastrophic hyperinflation. But the number is rising. And what Bitcoin like gold provides is protection if the monetary insanity unleashed by developed market central banks eventually results in the same outcome as Venezuela, North Korea, and so on. It's insurance. And judging by the soaring price, more and more are eager to buy this insurance. So there we go, diamond again. And uh, methinks they doth protest too much. But uh, I wanted to show you a chart here. This is very, very interesting. Uh, this is a chart of the Chinese Yuan. Now, if you remember, I had been pointing out for quite some time uh, that the dollar had been losing value against the Chinese Yuan. And that's to be expected because the U.S. is essentially bankrupt. Now, China is a state-run communist, uh, very poorly run on the macro level uh, as far as their potential, as far as the wealth that they have with hard workers and uh, factories and things like that. They could be much richer, much faster if they would allow the free market uh, to blossom it at every level, not just at the micro level. But nevertheless, their currency has been strengthening significantly against the US dollar. You can see starting in 2005, uh, the Chinese uh, uh, USD, Chinese Yuan has gone from 8.2 to 6.1 was the low. And that means at one point the dollar could buy 8.2 and uh, it could only buy 6.1, so a 25% drop in the value of the dollar over the course of 10 years or so. Uh, then we had a rally starting in 2014 where the dollar rallied about half of that, almost half of that. And uh, the dollar was increasing in value and uh, then 
we've got this recent reversal and it's this recent reversal I want to take a look at here because you can see it's right here um, the dollar again sorry let me get out to a further view so this is the dollar starting to gain value on the Chinese you want and you can see based on the date here we're talking let me get the exact date on that bottom we're talking September 8th so September 8th you can see that we had a basically we had we were in the process of a resumption of that downtrend in the dollar and then boom right there it, we got a bounce and it changed so the big question is what happened on September 8th well actually September 8th is right near the time Let's see if we can get it on this chart here on the one hour chart so you can see here uh, we'll, we'll go to two hours September 8th is right around in here okay and so Bitcoin had uh, had fallen to 4,000 on that Chinese ICO news but it was rallying back it was very very strong and this is when the Chinese let the second shoe drop It was right here you can see the exact same time on this chart as it is on this Chinese yuan dollar chart, September 8th. So what happened? Well, China basically outlawed the conversion of the Chinese yuan uh, into Bitcoin and essentially all cryptocurrencies. The government made it much more difficult to convert their money into cryptocurrencies. That's money flowing out of fiat and into crypto. And that caused a huge drop of 1,500 points in the value of Bitcoin. But the main thing I want to look at here is what it caused with this US dollar Chinese yuan. So one would think uh, just sort of intuitively that if the Chinese acted to protect their currency by keeping it from escaping through cryptocurrencies that would be bullish for their currency right so when that news comes out you would expect this chart that was in this trend of going down but again that's USDC and Y so that's US dollar going down we would have expected this to jump down to 6.3 or 6.2, but it didn't. It did the exact opposite. So when the Chinese did that to, quote unquote, protect their currency from cryptocurrencies, their currency went down. What does that mean? Well, I think that's a little bit more evidence that Diamond doubling down, he was doubling down on tricking the Chinese on getting the Chinese to get out of cryptocurrencies and that Diamond knows and the West know that China probably isn't going to succeed in having the world reserve currency because an end run has been done around, uh, uh, gone around that system by cryptocurrency. So that's a very interesting reaction. We have the Chinese outlawing the conversion of their yuan into crypto. Uh, we have Diamond coming out, seconding that. And we have a collapse in Bitcoin. And at the same time, we have a strengthening of the US dollar versus the Chinese yuan. Now, when's the last time you saw news, important news that affected precious metals being reflected in the Chinese yuan? When's the last time you saw important news about the US stock market or any market for that matter being reflected in the Chinese currency so anybody who tells you that Bitcoin is not important when it comes to international capital flows and government policy about currencies uh, they're obviously not telling you the truth because uh, we can see right here that this change in policy towards cryptocurrencies in China had an immediate impact on the USD CNY chart. 
So very, very interesting. Back to the Bitcoin chart. Again, we're on the right hand side of that mountain. Uh, that tells me that there is more downside momentum. I'm looking at 3000. When Bitcoin hit 3000, I was buying Ethereum. I may do the same uh, if we look at the USDT chart of Ethereum. Uh, we're talking, we're looking at a bullish breakout. I bought Ethereum down, I think I bought around 224. I wish I would have bought more when it got right down there to 200. But uh, if we look at the Ethereum chart, you can see that uh, it's kind of correcting back. It's it's had a tremendous run, but we're kind of within these uh, rising lines here. So we may get a breakout above that pennant. If we do get a correction in Bitcoin, we will get a correction in Ethereum, although it might not be as much. And at that point, I will be a buyer. And we'll talk to you next time.